Hey there, it's Dr. Peebler again. I wanted to talk about some mitochondrial self-care. Um, we're talking a lot about in the in the series at this moment, um, kind of the background of how mitochondria get damaged, um, how they repair themselves, how they interact with other cellular organelles, and how they in general relate to overall health. And um, we're going to see as the series goes on further and further that uh, you know mitochondrial health is um, critical to maintain your your personal health. So um, I'm going to start this one off uh, talking about um, the importance of sunlight. Um, we're going to talk a lot about uh, mitochondrial redox in this series. As a matter of fact, the series is called Mitochondrial Redox, but we're not going to start off by talking about those things. However, and later on the series, we will talk a lot about redox and what that is and how to improve redox. And the sun is going to be able to give you the most bang for the buck when it comes to mitochondrial redox. As a matter of fact, I think that the top health hack to improve your general health, but to, you know, for disease prevention and reversal is going to be through the use of full spectrum sunlight. And, you know, this is the time of year when you really want to leverage that to your benefit. You know, this is the time of year when, you know, we're now we're in August. So we are slightly past the summer solstice and we don't have as strong a sun as it was back in, you know, June and July, but there's still very strong sun available. And we're going to talk about the major mechanisms of how the sun improves health. Um, but needless to say, you need to be getting outside um, frequently throughout the day, every day if possible. And in particular, you're going to want a combination of morning, afternoon, and evening sun. And the morning and evening sun are going to be mostly to entrain your circadian oscillator and the suprachiasmatic nucleus to improve your circadian rhythm and this chronicity that you are firing on all cylinders and your circadian rhythm is in complete lockstep with the sun and the solar cycles. Our circadian rhythms are based on light cycles, most for, first and foremost. And so that morning sun color temperature and the evening sun color temperature are gonna help and train your circadian oscillator so that you can wake up when you're supposed to and go to sleep when you're supposed to and release hormones when you're supposed to. Then the afternoon sun in particular, around solar noon, if you can get outside, solar noon um, is about 115, 130, depending on the type of uh, time of the year. And that's going to be when the UV is the strongest. And you're going to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to vitamin D. So, you know, we want ideally our vitamin D levels to be between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. And the only way we're going to be able to get that is if we're getting around about 8,000 units per day of vitamin D. And, you know, check, have your doctor check your vitamin D level, your 25 hydroxy vitamin D level. It is really our main proxy for sun exposure and human beings. Um, there really is no other good way to let a clinician know how much sun you're getting is through your 25 hydroxy vitamin D unsupplemented, unsupplemented aka not getting any <laughs> additional vitamin D from a supplement or from you know any obvious like um, fortified food source. So that's going to allow us to know how much sun you're actually getting because the sun is much more than just UV and vitamin D. But that being said, you're going to want to get outside three times per day, ideally. In the morning, right when the sun rises, right before the sun sets, uh, those are different color temperatures to help with your circadian rhythms and your hormone cycles. And then Solar noon is going to be your best bet to get maximally exposed uh, without getting arrested and um, to get that UV on your skin so you can convert cholesterol to vitamin D. Okay, there's going to be many mechanisms, whether it be doing, through UV light, whether it be through infrared light, for, through red light, through far infrared light. Um, there's lots of mechanisms of how even within those categories of light, there's physiologic mechanisms, whether it be through POMC, whether it be through dopamine, serotonin, beta endorphin, et cetera, um, vitamin D, melatonin. There are a host of mechanisms of how uh, the sun improves your health, your mitochondrial redox in particular, 
which leads to overall health. And um, if you saw, you know, our video on the sun and health, you know, that's kind of a really 20,000 foot view of how the sun is and sun exposure and UV exposure is correlated with, um, with disease and how the more you get, you know, without burning or without frying yourself, the better um, for everything, including melanoma. So please get outside um, several times per day. You know, one of my mentors calls, you know, instead of taking a smoke break, take a, a sun break. Um, you got to get your eyes and your skin exposed uh, as much as possible. Do not stare at the sun, but you need to le be looking in the direction of the sun and have that, those different color temperatures, those different light frequencies uh, get into your eye because it's going to help set your circadian rhythm and also your hormones. Um, I hope this helps. This is some mitochondrial self-care. Until next time. Mm -hmm.